Hey everyone, thank you for joining me today for this series on formal verification of arbiters. In this session, we'll talk about a generic approach towards the verification of arbiters. We'll take the example of a fixed priority arbiter to discuss this approach. Uh, but this approach can be scaled to round robin and fixed priority or any other type of arbiters. My name is Vinish and I post formal verification videos in my YouTube channel, Formal Intelligence. If you have missed my previous videos, uh, please check out my channel. And uh, if you find the contents useful, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Let's get back into arbiter verification. Why do we need to do this? Why arbiters? First of all, what are arbiters? Arbiters play a crucial role in modern digital designs. They resolve conflicts when multiple devices or components request access to a shared resource, such as a memory bus or a network interface. Despite the ubiquity, verifying arbiters can be really challenging, especially when relying solely on simulation-based methods. And simulation is probably not the best approach to verify arbiters. If you take the example of a fixed priority arbiter, the priority arbitration is fixed. In this case, in the case we are going to discuss today, out of n requests, let's say n is 7, the request of 0 always has the highest priority and 7 has the lowest priority. Some other assumptions that we are considering here are there are no clock cycle delays between request and a grant. If a highest priority requester is requesting, then it gets a grant immediately. Second, only one grant is allowed at a time. So that means the output grant is a one hot vector. And the third one is a kind of an assumption. So the request, every request, once it gets asserted, once it gets, gets a grant, it has to be deasserted in the immediate next cycle. So what's the problem in hand for today? We have uh, an arbiters which are uh, with six requesters, uh, actually seven requesters, not really, eight requesters. The request, uh, requests are asserted and deasserted as we can see here on the slide. All the requests will be deasserted once it is granted. So there is no restriction on when a request can be asserted. For example, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, requester one through four are asserted in the first cycle and four uh, comes all of a sudden in the four clock cycle and so on. <clears throat> so in cycle one, uh, remember the highest priority one is R0 and the lowest priority one is R7 and grant is a vector, 8-bit vector. So in cycle one, what should happen? We have the highest priority requester one, which is asserted here. So it immediately get the grant. And in cycle two, because R1 goes slow in cycle one, by the way, <clears throat> because it already got a grant in the previous cycle. So nothing prevents it from getting back uh, in the next cycle uh, for this design. So in cycle two, R2 is still asserted because it hasn't gotten a grant. So R, R4, R3 and R4, and R5 came up in the second cycle. So if we analyze just this cycle, cycle number two, cycle ID two, R2 is the highest priority one, so it gets a grant and so on and so forth. R3 gets a grant, and this is a special case, um, not really a special case, but uh, because cycle R0 gets asserted all of a sudden in cycle four, uh, this gets the highest priority, even though R4 and R5 and six and seven are there waiting at cycle ID four. So zero gets a grant, then zero goes slow, and then four gets a grant, five gets a grant, and then six and seven gets grants. Now, how do you verify this arbiter? So we, we have already discussed an approach to verify fixed priority arbiter that you see here in one of the previous videos. Um, so if you have not watched it already, please uh, check it out. So this is another approach to verify fixed priority or any general arbiter. So this, uh, if we consider the case, um, if you randomly pick a request, <clears throat> let's say we pick the request five, uh, this red circle has to be in should have been here. So if we if we consider request five, then it gets asserted in cycle number six. So how do we know that it has to get asserted in cycle number six? 
um, so how can we write <coughs> some some bench in formal and that will say that hey um, um, we recycle number six and uh, request of five uh, is expecting a grant and check if RTL is actually or the design is actually giving grant so the challenge is to write a bench or something informal that will let you do that so that you can plug it into uh, the design and then uh, get failures as and when that doesn't happen how do we do it uh, so one way one way uh, by the way this is adopted uh, this is a uh, adaptive version in fact the same version almost same version mentioned in this paper industrial strength formal using abstractions by ashish nobari and you can check out this paper here so all credits to this paper and some of my friends who uh, really helped me uh, uh, nail this um, presentation and uh, one way to count one way to verify this arbiter is to count the number of outstanding high priority requests uh, since since you are considering a random request uh, R5, uh, the high priority request that we are interested in are shown in this green box, kind of a box. By the way, uh, this this random request R5, it's also called called a symbolic uh, variable or an oracle variable. Uh, it's something that uh, that we pick randomly in each uh, formal runs. Whenever invoke it, whenever you invoke uh, any formal tool and uh, during the lifespan of that particular run when you click run and then run the checks this symbolic variable stays constant so in this case let's say in one of the random runs it picked the value r5 <clears throat> uh, so please check out my uh, video on uh, symbolic variables if you are not familiar with this approach and for to understand this presentation uh, it's sufficient to um, just consider symbolic variable as a internal formal signal in the formal bench uh, and it's picking a value r5 in a particular run where you got this failure or when this check was uh, being checked so r5 gets asserted in cycle number two here now uh, if we can if we can design a counter that would become zero when the all the, when all the high priority requests uh, have had their chance and got a grant then uh, you can you can say that hey uh, every high priority request already got a grant now I'm expecting R5 to get a grant yeah so uh, that that would that would be one one approach so then the question comes down to uh, how how we can define this counter by the way this is this is kind of a standard approach we use uh, something similar in in verifying FIFOs also which is discussed in one of the previous videos. So um, you might want to uh, take take some time to understand this approach if you are hearing it for the first time. And uh, if you are if you are doubtful about this approach, uh, try to create waveforms or uh, combinations of requests, uh, which would uh, which would violate uh, this scenario. I mean, uh, you design an outstanding, design a counter which is catching, which is counting the number of outstanding requests in this green area, uh, the high priority request, and you are getting a grant when the outstanding request counter is not zero. Then obviously we are going to miss out some bugs and there's some flaw in this approach. So if you find something similar, uh, some case, even a single case, do let me know. Thank you. So uh, how do we design this counter? Like I said, uh, this box, this request in this green area, these are the high priority requests as far as the requester R5 is concerned. Now, uh, to for for uh, for counting only requests from this area, we we can first design something called a mask, uh, which is uh, which is one bit corresponding to each request. So there are eight requests, so it's it's going to be eight bit vector. And the lower priority requests are going to be R6 and 7. So we assign two zeros for R6 and 7, 7 and 6, and ones for all others. Now, what we do is we will uh, request REQ. It's a vector, it's an 8 bit vector, which is R7 all down to R0. We and it with the mask. It's like a bit with bitwise and. So even if R7 and R6 are one in request, when we and it with the mask, 
it gets it, the entire expression becomes zero for r6 and r7 bits so if we take for example cycle one uh let's see how how this expression uh how, how this expression works so request one it's going to be one one zero one 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 zero now these two are gone because we are ending it with a mask and these are the remaining ones that will be one plus one plus one plus one that is four and we have a grant so four minus one is going to be three that's outstanding request by the way um this or reduced expression of grant this simply says that uh, the grand vector, which is an 8 bit vector, uh, is a non zero value. So it's going to be the expression or reduced uh, grand is going to be 1 for all these cases <clears throat> and 0 in this case because there's going to be no grand. So you can uh, work out how these numbers are coming out. And then then we are introducing. Um, introducing a formal uh, signal called sample in so this goes high when the request r5 goes high which is in cycle number cycle id 2 right you can also uh, have this expression with uh, with an additional non-deterministic symbolic variable that can take a random value by that what i mean is instead of just saying that request symbolic request that is when request r5 equals equals one give me a pulse instead of that you can add this expression like request r5 and another non-deterministic symbolic variable so how that helps why 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 do we need this so if we don't do it uh, what happens is we will always assert sample in when the first occurrence of r5 comes and what if there is a bug only when uh, the request R5 request for the second time? Let's say there is a pulse like this here, and it gets it gets a grand as expected. That's fine, and it gets another pulse like this. But then for that case, it doesn't get a grand. So if we keep this non-deterministic symbol and add it with this expression, what happens is it can find a failure uh, for the second case. So in the first occurrence of request five, the non-deterministic symbol can go to zero. We won't get this pulse. Instead, in the second cycle, this non-deterministic symbol will become high, and then you do your checking there. This is again another <clears throat> advanced concept in formal, introducing non-determinism in the checks using symbolic variables. Uh, something you might want to think a bit more if you're hearing it for the first time. For 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 this example, let's simply ignore non-determinism we are just going to check the very first occurrence of the request r5 right and for this case uh sample in goes high at clock two then i'm introducing we're introducing another flag called sampled in it's uh it's kind of a sticky flag by that what i mean is uh if when, I, when we say sticky flag uh it's some signal which goes high when certain event happens and then this stays high forever so we're just saying that hey there is some interesting past event that happened and uh, i just want to do something in the future based on that past event so i don't uh, i don't know when it happened but i know just sometime back in the in the past it happened so we just keep it asserted so you can use it uh, for future checks based on this past event that's what exactly we are we are going to do now now this this is what we were waiting for this this uh, is a check here so what you're saying is you have the sticky flag sampled in what does that mean that means we got a request for one of the symbolic requests sometime in the past and then the outstanding request became zero so corresponding to uh, if you, corresponding to uh, that particular signal we were counting all the we were actually tracking all the requests and grants of the high priority request we were waiting for the fe bench was waiting for that counter to become zero so when these two events happen sample in and out and outstanding request becoming zero then so this is sample in outstanding signal request becoming zero then at that exact cycle we should get a grant for the request five how does that how does that sound 
you think that will solve uh, all the problems? Will it miss any bug? Something to think about. So, yeah. So before we before we close this, what what would happen if uh, if this uh, symbolic request? So I'm just assuming that uh, the value of symbolic request is going to stay at R5 throughout this bench. What happens if it changes between, let's say, clock cycle two uh, when it gets sampled in and uh, clock cycle six when it gets uh, gets a response? So we would we would say that hey, uh, for request request symbolic request which is R5, we sampled in. That means uh, we are tracking the high priority request. Uh, corresponding to uh, R5 and then suddenly that symbolic request changed to R let's say R6 then when the counter becomes zero the counter is for R5 we are expecting a grant for the symbolic request which is now R6 which is not going to be not going to happen because R6 gets grant only one or one cycle later not on the clock cycle not on this clock cycle so um well is that is that an is that a design bug i don't think so because uh, it's uh we didn't write or check properly see we are checking for r5 uh we should check the grant for r5 right why should we check for r6 so it's uh important to make sure that we keep uh we keep we add an, add a constraint on the symbolic request for stability we say that hey uh, throughout this if we run don't change the value of symbolic request because that messes up my whole system all checks uh, so this is a very common case with uh, symbolic uh, variables mostly we keep symbolic variables stable uh, or uh, constraint within uh, we'll add a constraint to take uh, let it take a certain set of values mostly stable though yep so i think that uh, concludes uh, the formal verification of arbiters using a generic approach so one important thing to remember if i can go back to the previous slide is that if the the design of mask it can be uh, it can be changed based on the type of arbiter so if it's like a first time first come first serve arbiter or a round robin arbiter or some other weighted uh, priority arbiter then you can have a uh, modeling for mask and you could use something similar to verify that as well with this video uh, we are uh, we are covering uh, we, uh, we have covered another uh, generic approach for formal verification of arbiters i hope you really enjoyed the video so if you found this useful uh, please don't forget to sub subscribe and uh, hit the like button and share it with your colleagues Stay tuned for our next video where we will dive deeper into another fun formal verification topic. Thank you.